Hi, I'm Becky Baxendale. I'm the Head of Nursing for Adult Community Services and Specialist Care at Dorpshire Healthcare. Hi, my name is Dr Rowe from one of the educational SAS doctors working in Bolsover and Clay Cross Community Mental Health Team in Chesterfield. Today we're going to have a conversation really about, about the support that people with a diagnosis of bipolar have and have previously had and the future for the bipolar education course within Derbyshire Healthcare. So a deal. First one, really. Mm -hmm. Can you just talk me through people's journeys that they would have had prior to us introducing this psychoeducation course within your area? So without that, what would people receive if they had a diagnosis of bipolar? Okay, so, I mean, what we've seen um, is patients coming in to the hospital with their first manic episode and being discharged, um, receiving a diagnosis of bipolar affective disorder. And from their discharge, there would be prescribed medications, there would be stable on, and a CPN allocation. Um, the CPN would see them, um, and we would have regular outpatient reviews uh, to review their mood and medications. Um, as, as far as uh, giving them any more input regarding psychology, there, is no kind of, there was no consistent standard as to how to further educate mm. them from bipolar as to link in with any specific psychology or psych um, psychologists. Um, so we would, we would treat them basically outpatients and sometimes we would not always have CPN as well involved. Um, so based on that we would try to educate them as they go along. Yeah. And would my experience with the CPM would be that working within the team of CPMs, that wouldn't necessarily be consistent education. It would be based on the knowledge of the CPM. There may be a manual that we would use. Is that something that we, we had here? It wasn't something I was aware that we had. Yes, I wasn't aware either. So it, was, it would be more that it would just be dependent on that CPM's experience. Yeah. And each person would have different experience of CPM because that's how human nature is. Yes. And the questions that they would come with our patient's clinic would clarify some of their doubts about their diagnosis and their, their progress. Yeah. So it would be not enough time probably that the patients would have to ask about um, details. So it would be, yeah. It feels like the information will be given to them, but not in a, in a structured way and not, not in a consistent way that it would be maybe something that they've thought about and they would ask yes. quite often. It would be very much driven by them rather than us as a service saying, this is what you need to know. Yes, that, that's correct. Yeah. Um, we we rely on their questioning rather yeah. than something that we are imparting them with. Okay. Thank you. So tell me a little bit more about the common status of the course where we're at to. Okay. So we're currently running the course here in North Derbyshire. Uh, it involves patients from Bolsover and Clay Cross CMHTs. Um, they are coming here now in their, they've completed 11 sessions um, out of the 21. And what we found very useful was the Barcelona manual with which we used to organise each session. The discussions we have before and after the sessions have been very useful in actually maintaining that structure during the session. And it gives the patients as well uh, a degree of structure uh, as we kind of um, highlight the, the structure in flowcharts and that is, that is provided even before the, um, the groups, um, the course or the session starts yeah. for the day. And I'm aware you've got a member of staff who's quite experienced in delivering groups. Has that been helpful? Yes. Or, yeah. Yeah. That's that's very. Uh, that, that's something very striking. Yeah, for for this course that um, our OT uh, occupational therapist um, has taken a lead in organising um, the groups because she has um, a lot of experience in running groups. And that's been very useful in setting up the group in the first place, as well as how the sessions would run. 
and uh, based on the fact that we're experienced in organization, we've been able to run the group well, much more smoothly than we anticipated. That's really good to hear. So I know that you're about halfway through the course at the moment, you've done about 11, 12 weeks. Yeah. Could you just tell me a little bit more about your experience of setting up that course and delivering that course and what, what kind of things worked well? Let's start with that. Okay, so what we, ha we had quite a few sessions, um, the staff who were going to facilitate this uh, course and that meant that we would have to meet um, fairly regularly quite a few months before the course took place. But the, the, the positive thing was that all the facilitators and staff were quite enthusiastic as well as determined and um, despite it being something very new to them, um, very positive intentions of, uh, of carrying on. Certainly my experience of, of supporting the staff to do that was that they were very enthusiastic and very keen yes. to start setting up this course and to to deliver this as part of the service that yes. we want to be offering to people. Yes, and I gathered the support they got from uh, linking up with uh, colleagues and people who have done the course and facilitated it um, was really helpful as well. Mm -hmm. And that gave us um, an idea of what we were up to um, before, before we were going to involve ourselves in, in the course. Yeah. Um, and I'm aware that you've got people facilitated within the group. How does that, that work? How does that feel? Okay, so the peer facilitator has been a very helpful um, addition to our, our, our facilitation. Um, he's, uh, he's, he's, he's done some course training prior to being involved in our um, course. And for people who find it very anxious, especially um, well, we, we have some anxieties as facilitating, but I can, mm. I can only imagine what the patients who are, you know, the people who are attending it might be going through. And the peer facilitators are very helpful in uh, relieving some of that anxiety because they have gone through an experience themselves of being in that position. Yeah. And um, certainly from the lived experience point of view, they can, they can really help some of the people who are being very anxious during the sessions. It's quite invaluable, isn't it? it? It really, it makes it real. Yeah. I think when, as professionals, we can talk about what we think that feels like, but unless you've actually experienced that, that's, it doesn't hold anywhere near as much weight with people that go through those experiences yes. themselves. Yes. It's really, really important. And um, especially I've noticed that in our, in, in my sessions which have dealt with medications, the peer facilitator have been very useful as well to contribute uh, about their own experiences about medications and that really helps the uh, patients understand and take on board what uh, what's being delivered in the course. Well, what sort of things didn't go so well? What were your challenges in setting the course up? Like you've already said, it's quite a new thing. Yeah. It's not something that sort of thing that we've done before, so it's, mm. that's never going to be an easy thing mm. to up and run with it. Yeah. So what sort of things were, were difficult? So we didn't know what to expect really, um, because it was new. We didn't know how the how the, how the patients would react to it, how would they take to it, would they understand um, what 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 it meant? Mm -hmm. And we were following a structure. Um, and how, how did it all play? So that was some of the anxieties we had yeah. as a group. Um, I think there were other, some other problems that we were facing which were challenging, such as um, the referrals. Um, we didn't have enough referrals or a weight in which we could filter out the referrals. Mm. Our computer system would not um, be able to flag up my poor patients that easily. Um, just based on clustering mm. and so finding the right people for our course was a challenge and it took um, quite quite a while to yeah. actually get to the right people who could, uh, could benefit from this course. Yeah. Were there any other challenges at all? So um, things that how to, I mean, 
we're, we're imparting this course in North Derbyshire. Geographically, it's quite a challenging area. Um, there are people who are living in, even in our own sector of Balsall and Clay Cross, they're living quite far apart and sometimes it's very difficult for them to arrange transport to come to mm -hmm. central location. Mm -hmm. And the location itself had its own challenges about how to accommodate uh, the number of people we would have. So those were things that, um, that came up. Yeah. I'm really pleased to hear that you have trouble fitting everybody into the room. That's that's a good challenge to have. <laughs> I think that your course is that popular. Okay. You are struggling yeah. to fit everybody in. Thank you. So Vicky, what are your thoughts about the future of the psychoeducation group here in Derbyshire? I think taking into account some of the challenges that that you've all experienced around setting the course up. The geography of Derbyshire is quite long, it's quite narrow, it is quite rural with quite poor transport links. What I've, we've got agreement from the division for is that we will now be having a group in the north and a group in the south that will at least run once a year in each and the staff will be released to be able to deal with that. What I really want to do is I want to build some resilience in that, so we've got a limited number of staff trained to deliver the course at the moment, so really I'm hoping to get a few more people trained. And also to support staff, because 21 weeks is an extremely long time to go, and staff can't, we can't just rely on a small pool of staff for that, we need to extend that. So that's my aim, is that we get staff trained up, that we get more police support workers on board and we get them the appropriate training and support as well. Mm. And then we've got a, a cohort of people that can really deliver this group and I we, really I want it to be treatment as usual. I want this to be part of our core offer for the adult community services. That My ideal really would be that it would be running in every single CMHT. Mm. In reality there isn't enough people that have bipolar for that to happen, mm. never mind the impact on staffing. Mm. So I think the compromise of the North and the South would be really, it's a nice compromise that we've got, I think. Mm. But what I need to do to support the staff around that is make sure that they're trained, but also make sure that they're getting supervision. You talked earlier about how having those links with the Health Science Network colleagues and colleagues from across the East Midlands that were delivering the course and being able to speak to them and ask questions and how valuable and important that was for you all. So I think it's trying to replicate that, even if it's just on our own small level, that we have regular meetings with the staff and with our colleagues that are delivering this group and this course and just so that they can talk it through and they can talk about their challenges and they can talk about what's working for them actually and learn from each other and just support each other. So that's really where I'm hoping it will go. Well, like I say, I've got agreement for North and South Group, which I'm really pleased that we've got that, and I'm really looking yeah. forward yeah. to that restarting yeah. for next year, yeah. early next year, and anyway. Well, all that sounds very encouraging, and we look forward to that. So to finish off, we've got some feedback, because we would have loved to have services involved in the video with us, but that wasn't able to happen, so we have some feedback for them, from them around the course, and we just want to share this with you. The group is very informative and is helping me to understand my condition, lots of good interaction and chances to ask any questions. So, very interesting and useful to have the handouts. Challenging at times, especially when trying to contribute. Good group. Uh, homework about uh, life charts is difficult. <laughs> I think everybody's feeling the same about yeah. life charts. <laughs> Um, meeting same like-minded people who share the same diagnosis. Look forward to coming and getting out of the house. I have nothing but positivity for this group. The staff are helpful, considerate and friendly. The other people on the group are the same. The content is very useful and insightful. I have learned a lot, not only what relates to me but others. It's also fun and laid back. And the last one for you, May. I'm getting a better understanding of bipolar and the medication. Meetings help you to get out and meet different people, and people understand more in the group. And the final one is, the group is going really well. We have all settled well together. 
and feel comfortable sharing our different ideas and experiences. The information we have received so far in the weekly handouts have been fantastic and a massive help so far. Thank you, Dave. Thank you.